connected, the connected navigator. And on the right-hand side, you see a folder called Data Exchange. So for this demo, I've had to make sure that everything was prepared <clears throat> because otherwise it would take a considerable amount of time to show you. And you know, in, in these types of webinars, we don't have that time. So, so let's get started. This is the Connected Navigator. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Connected, um, today is not going to be the day that I'm going to be able to give you the general run through of the program. So we're going to kind of skip to the, you know, the meat and potatoes, so to speak, and um, move on to the data exchange. However, if there's anybody interested, you know, I can send a recording of a webinar that goes through that stuff and might be helpful or of interest uh, specifically to that stuff. So the data exchange, um, as we referred to it, is a way to import and export data. Now, what we've done is we've taken a traditional way where you could go and connect it, let's say an import, um, an invoice, or a customer, and we've allowed and we've created an automation. We've created an automation with a quality control system built in. So for example, if I was to go to import customers, I'm going to get a screen that appears. It's got all the various fields. Um, they're all lined up. They're all neatly labeled. Um, some fields are required, some aren't, some will default to certain values if they're not specified. But the key thing being is there's quality control. It's the data that comes in goes through what we call an import mask, which is what's in front of you basically. And basically it filters out anything that doesn't line up or match the mask and rejects it and it accepts anything that does line up and match the mask. Importing customers, for example, can be used to import new customers or to import updates to existing customers. So that's important, depending on how you use a feature like the data exchange, because maybe you have your customers in an external database or a CRM that, that is the front face that keeps the addresses, for example. So that's one aspect of the data exchange. The other aspect is export. So we have data that comes in, and we have data that can go out. Now the data that goes out is based on what you specify. So I'm going to open the data exchange window to, to talk about this. The data exchange is located under the utilities menu. So this is for administrative users only is what I would recommend. It's also grant a password privilege. So you have to grant a user privilege to access this. The reason being is you can export some pretty sensitive data. So you know, use with caution, obviously. And this brings me to my data exchange window. If I click on my order import, this is basically a job that's set up that says when this window is initiated, which I'll show you when I hit start jobs, which will start the three jobs I have here, Connected will look for and import orders. If it sees an order, it's just going to grab that file and import it. So that's how the auto import works. And I'll show you that because I'm going I'm to live demo how it actually works. And basically, you map a folder here, and I've got one mapped to my desktop, which is over on the right, this folder here. And that's where Connected will look. So while the process is initiated, you know, whether it's for a day, a week, a month, a year, anytime a file gets dropped into the folder that has the prefix SO, because in this case it's a, an order, a sales order, Connected will grab the file and process it. And by process, I mean import it. If the file is invalid, it will reject it. The auto import, just to finish with that, supports inventory, customer orders as I've talked about, customers, invoices, as well as purchase orders. There probably will be some expansion to this in the future, but that's what it supports currently. The auto export is really the, the neat thing that we've done, and it really kind of gives control to somebody of their data. So in the past, you might have to get an external programmer, write queries on the database, grab data, pull it out, and then put it in FileMaker or some external product to do analysis, or upload it to a website to show histories or something like that. There's all sorts of reasons that our customers want their data, whether it's for analytical, or it's display, or it's in one case to, to track warranties and um, chargebacks that are given to customers. Uh, that's something that I was just uh, dealing with the other day. But there's many, many reasons. So basically how it works is you set up a job. And I've got two jobs set up already. I have customer data and invoice data. 
So I'm going to invo export invoices in one case and customers in the other. So let's take a look at the invoices, and I'll just modify it to show how it works. When I click Modify, I have the option to change the name. No point in that. I have the option to change the folder so I can set the destination of where the, imp or the export goes. So from here, I can set a prefix. So in my case, I said invoices underscore. That's going to be my prefix. And then I pick the type of data. I, and in this case, I'm, I'm doing sales. And sales, as I'll show you, can mean a few different things um, because invoices can relate to customers that can relate to inventory. So there's multiple tables, so to speak, involved. And my data is set to export every one minute. And I did that for the, 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 this this example because to show you this, I need to have it actually happen. So it's going to happen in one minute. That's probably an extreme interval. Most people that we've seen who are, are going to use this or are using it are doing it daily. That seems to be the, the, the thing that's ideal so far. So you could do daily at this time, or you could just do a one-off, export everything right now. You can filter the records um, not by query, so to speak, but by the records that come out. So in the case of sales, you can do all sales every time, every single invoice in the system, or only records that were <clears throat> posted within the last, and you could put in three days, two days, etc. Or in the case of my example, I'm going to say only records posted since last export. So if I export now, and then I export a minute from now, I only want the data that's been posted since that time. So you have a lot of flexibility here on, on how the data comes out. And then, of course, I can do all fields, or I can select my fields. If I hit Select, we open up a window um, that allows you to pick fields. Now you can pick all sorts of fields. I've got them over here. And you can simply just go double-click, double-click, or you can go highlight on the, the left side and go delete, delete, delete or add, add, add. You can drag and drop the order. So I could push up here and move the order around. And of course, I can pick, in this case, from the customers, the invoice, the invoice details, which is the body of an invoice that contains quantity, line item, price, all that sort of stuff, as well as I can draw from all the inventory fields. And just for the the sake of this conversation, when I'm drawing on customers, inventory, and invoices, that combines about 50 custom fields that you have access to when you do the export. So it's just to, to throw a number out there because there's you, you could have custom sales fields on an invoice, custom fields on a customer, and custom fields on an inventory item. And I just mentioned that because if you're taking data for external analytics, those custom fields might be very, very important for what you're doing. If I'm happy with my field selection, I just hit Done. And then I hit Save to basically save the job. So what we're going to do now is we're going to initiate the, the data exchange. So this data exchange window is designed to run on a server headless. It's not going to be a user. You would never use it the way I'm about to show you. You're going to start it on the server, and it's just going to run and do its thing until you stop it. So that's what we mean by headless. It doesn't have an operator. So when I hit Start Jobs, we're going to get the spinning wheel, shall we say, processing jobs, and things are going to start to happen. You can see already my invoices and my customers were exported. That was done. Now over here on the right, I have got nothing ready to import. But if I drop this file here, into my import folder, flash, there goes the order. So if I drop these other two files in, and then it's going to pick it up, done. So we've just imported three orders. So you can see how that process works. And this will just continue until I hit stop. So for the sake of a demo purpose, I can't add data while I'm running it because it's running an export and an import. So I have to stop the jobs. But just before I do that, in the import folder, we see three new folders that were created. We have failed, logs, and processed. The processed orders that I just put there are now in that folder. And that's kind of how it works. 
So it's, it's actually a really neat way to access your data. You can see that the invoice and the customer data, another minute passed, zero records exported because nothing has changed since then. So what I'll do is I'm going to hit stop and then I'll close this window and I'll just quickly go to a customer's invoice that I already have set up. So I have an invoice and I'll just hit post. So we're going to update this record and then we're just going to go right back to the, and actually for the sake of this example, I'll go to the customer, I'll hit details and I'll hit modify and I'll change this to Acme Inc and save it. So we've made a change to a customer and an invoice. And if I go back and I go to the user, pro, or sorry, the utilities, data exchange, and I hit start jobs, we will go through. And the next time we hit a minute, we'll have an invoice and a customer export that, if everything works well, should have one record in each. Unless, of course, the invoice does, actually, I'm not sure if it does line items, but I think it, does, it counts the invoice uh, headers only. <clears throat> and I was right. So it only counts the invoice headers, so we can see that we've dropped the files. Note the file names are date, we have 0314 year 2013, and then we have the exact time, metric time, which would be 1300 hours, 27 minutes, and two seconds. So that's the naming convention that's used there. And that's it for the data exchange. Um, it's something that there's a lot of potential uses that could be derived from this. We're really excited about it, and we hope that uh, the folks watching today or in the future will find something that they can use it as well. One thing that, that a user has brought up to us is that this would be a great way to pass data um, in a Dropbox if you needed to. You could certainly just have this pointed at a Dropbox and just put that data there, have the data synced up to, to your folder in the cloud, and then move it to wherever you need to. Um, maybe it's for some external um, application or FileMaker database, who knows, but anyway. So that's the data exchange. So I'm going to stop sharing my desktop 